If a graph is composed of a single sine wave or the sum of sine waves, then it can be paired with a corresponding parametric shape. For the sine wave, this shape is a circle. By the corresponding parametric shape, I mean that if we trace out a graph while we rotate around the shape, we will draw the paired graph. The next graph is that of the sum of two sine waves. Its corresponding shape looks somewhat like a three-point propeller. Because this is a sum of two waves, we will see two rotating vectors instead of one. The last graph is that of the sum of three sine waves. Here is its corresponding parametric shape. And since we're dealing with the sum of three waves, there are three rotating vectors. Before we move on to the square wave, let's appreciate the view of all three graphs extending simultaneously. To reiterate, these graphs and shapes come as a package deal. The shape is just the parametric version of the graph. Here are the actual equations I use for each of these. The square wave, which jumps between a maximum and a minimum periodically, can be approximated using a sum of sine waves. This blue approximation is out of 10 sine waves. I originally suspected that the corresponding parametric shape of this approximating graph would be a square. It is not. Rather, it is this unique shape. Let's take a closer look at the 10 vectors, which create beautiful patterns as they curl up and unwind. Even though all 10 vectors are rotating at different velocities, there is this moment in the middle where they all line up. Then we can see a triangle, a square, a pentagon, a hexagon, and so on. But anyways, back to the point. If the parametric shape that corresponds to a sinusoidal approximation of the square wave is not at all related to a square, then what wave does correspond to the parametric square? Now I must clarify, when I say a parametric square, I'm not talking about a perfect square. I'm talking about an approximation of a square using rotating vectors. That is, with one vector, we get a circle. With a second vector rotating clockwise, we'll end up with this rounded off square. We'll keep going and add a third vector rotating counterclockwise. This gives us something that looks like a piece of toast. To get a better approximation than toast, we will extend to 10 vectors. Now this won't give us a perfect square, but it will be enough to get an idea of the wave that this shape is approximating. But first, let's zoom in and appreciate the collective work of these 10 vectors. Hopefully you share in the fascination that we're using circular motion to trace out a non-circular shape. Alright, let's get to the wave. We already know that this shape does not approximate the square wave. So the question remains, what wave does it approximate? Here it is. Like the square wave, it oscillates between a maximum and a minimum, but it does not jump. So instead, it approximates the trapezoid wave. Again, contrary to what I assumed, the square wave approximation does not come from the approximated parametric square. It comes from this shape. And the approximated parametric square produces an approximation of the trapezoid wave. Who would have guessed? If you're still here, thank you for sticking around. We'll see you in the next one.